Um, so hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jenny Roloff-Rothman. Um, I am uh, in charge of the reviewing and vetting for uh, PANSIG 2023. Um, just like to go over a couple things. Of course, I've shared the doc with you um, in the chat. Um, I believe uh, Bill has also posted a copy or a link to the website where you can find the guidelines as well in case you joined late. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to briefly go over those and kind of talk about structure or, or you know, tips for, for writing a proposal um, if you have not written one before, um, but also looking at kind of the, the general things that are relevant to this particular uh, conference. All right. So um, one of the things I want to sort of draw attention to uh, right at the very top of the document is the idea here that um, PANSIG is intended, it's always kind of been intended to be a very supportive conference for both experienced presenters and also uh, people who are newer to presenting or newer to the academic community. So if you have never written uh, a proposal before, or this is one of your first presentations, um, PANSIG is a really good place to sort of get your feet wet and um, kind of get to know the community and get settled in. Um, so uh, please, please consider this conference um, a, a great place to do something if you're um, in the first time. Um, here's the basic guidelines. Uh, you can see here uh, 75 characters or 40 characters as a max for the title. Um, you've got the different formats you can see here. Poster sessions are only 40 minutes. So that's shorter than in some other cases um, at other conferences but um, it's intended to generate a lot of uh, discussion and conversations. Um, and you can see we've got face-to-face. Uh, -face. We also have pre-recorded online ones available. Um, and then we'll also have the unvetted SIG forums. Um, as you can see in the abstract details here, um, this particular uh, abstract, the same abstract that you submit is also going to be going into the conference handbook um, or be available through the conference uh, website registration system. Um, mainly, um, I guess the, the things to point out here, if you are uh, well under the word or character limit, there, of course, there's a chance that it will be uh, rejected. As I mentioned, so in a lot of cases, um, if if the situation is such that something does not meet the criteria, it's off topic, it is unrelated, or you know, it would need a complete overhaul um, to even meet the basic criteria, there's a chance it would be um, completely rejected. But in most cases for PANSIG, uh, if it is not accepted as is without revisions, uh, there would be uh, a request for either minor revisions or possibly major revisions. And then upon review of the revisions of your abstract, uh, if it has been brought up to a uh, professional academic caliber for acceptance, it would be accepted. Um, that doesn't mean that everyone is guaranteed acceptance, of, of course. Uh, but what it does mean is if there is an element of your abstract that might be weaker, you will have the opportunity. Uh, to revise it, to make it um, stronger. So again, um, experienced presenters, experienced proposal writers, revision is always a, a good thing to, to have as an option. Newer or less experienced uh, proposal writers, this is a good learning experience for you um, as with the kind of revision process. Um, factors that are strengthening or weakening the proposal. Uh, you need to make sure in terms of the strength that everything is very clearly written. Structurally speaking, uh, there should be background information or whatever is going to be grounding the research or grounding the classroom practice you might be describing. That should be coming at the beginning. And then um, maybe a, a brief description of what was done. Uh, so maybe a little bit of description of either the methodology or the process of what is coming you know, what, what the topic is you'll be talking about. And the last part, uh, if you think of it, you know, one third, one third, one third, the, the final one third would really focus on what is going to be done in the presentation session. So is it description of the data collection process? Is it sharing analysis of the results? Is it 
um, sharing results plus discussion amongst participants about the relevance of this research or the findings to your classroom. Or if it's kind of a workshop style, how would you, you, know, you might say, participants will be expected to join in conversations or participants are encouraged to bring their own ideas, right? So make sure that it's clear you're giving background, um, you know, the, the content of what it is you're going to be talking about, and then kind of what you might expect participants to have to do, if anything, um, kind of structurally. Um, this last sentence here on this bullet point, make sure that there's no doubt in the mind of the reviewer what is going to be shown, investigated, or discussed, all right? So there shouldn't be anything vague, be as clear and concise as possible. Um, other things here, um, think about when you're writing a proposal, uh, are you gonna try to cover too much for the time allotted, right? So if uh, you are explaining um, multiple steps of a particular research project or something like, is this something that's better suited to a longer form? You know, sometimes uh, people will think they, they want to share research or they want to share practices. And it turns out that it's, it's just too much information to be covered in, for example, a 25 minute period when really a 25 minute uh, presentation is 20 minutes presentation, five minutes Q and A. So please be mindful of how much you are thinking about trying to cover in a session as you write a proposal. <clears throat> um, proofreading, editing, uh, certainly important things to consider. Uh, familiarity with current research or placing it within the research within the field. Uh, if there is a gap in literature or something of that nature, you can point that out as well and mention how this addresses it. Um, I think that's pretty much... Yeah, I think that's that covers that. And you can you can all read the, the bullet points, so I don't want to read them out directly to you. In terms of things that might weaken a proposal, um, too general or too vague. Uh, again, be as specific as you can, context specific. Um, do not identify institutions. Um, do not uh, identify individuals or anything like that. So uh, specific concepts and ideas, but not specific names, um, identifying information. Um, let's see. Here, uh, abstract is not appropriate for the selected SIG. Um, here it's listed that it might weaken the proposal. Um, of course, it might in the proposal, but at the same time, uh, if a reviewer determines upon reading an abstract that uh, they, it might be better under the category of a different SIG, that is something that they will be able to indicate. And so it is possible that something might be shifted or moved and then reviewed by someone in a different SIG. Um, so that might increase the likelihood of revisions needed. Okay. Um, let's see, other things to consider. Ah, as I mentioned before, with identifying information, you don't want to have this in the abstract. Uh, this uh, absolutely means uh, cock and he grant numbers and things of that nature. I know uh, cock and he grants require some mention of the grant or the number uh, with the presentations. This could be added as a note separate from the abstract itself on, on a submission in sort of the notes portion of, of the, the form. Um, it's also something that if a presentation is accepted, that grant number information can go on the slides in the presentation. Uh, but again, it should not be included in the abstract because that would be identifying information. Same goes for anything related to uh, JOLT uh, specific activities or offices. Another thing to consider, uh, maybe you have um, a textbook or materials or something that you use that maybe you have developed. Um, it is okay to share resources and materials like that that you have uh, created yourself, but uh, please do not uh, write something in a way that comes across like an advertisement for a commercial product. Com um, commercial or kind of um, associate member featured promotional workshops or, or sessions are a different category entirely. So if that is something you are thinking of doing, want to talk about in a session is like that, um, consider whether or not 
your your um, you know there's a better venue for that um, that particular type of uh, presentation. Um, looking at the rubric here, this is the rubric uh, that's going to be used by all of the reviewers. Now, basically, it's a checklist. Um, and you'll see here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so as a reviewer is reading your abstract, they're basically going to be thinking of each one of these as a yes or no point. And if you have a tick yes for all eight of these, seven to eight of these, um, that's probably going to mean acceptance without revisions. Um, five to six is probably acceptance with minor revisions. Uh, three to four, uh, either major revisions, probably major revisions required. Um, and then one to two, zero to two is probably either rejection or um, major revisions required to be considered, but still not uh, a guarantee of acceptance. So um, it's not a range for each of these categories. It's basically uh, the more knows you would have to these ticks, the uh, lower the rating that uh, the abstract would receive. Um, here's the style guidelines down here. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, I think stop there. If anyone does have any questions about content or format or anything related to uh, the style for a submission, you're welcome to contact the the Pansig team. Um, I've already been contacted, uh, you know, through the the system for a, with a couple questions from people. So if something does come up after today's session, uh, you're welcome to just send a message um, and we'll get back to you.